everybody. Here we are, first project of the semester. Uh, thanks again to everyone who showed up to get supplies last week. And just to let you know that we were gonna, we we're gonna have another date at some point in time for people to get stuff. Um, I've already gotten one email, but if you have not gotten your supplies, please email me so that we can kind of go over everything that uh, you need to do and how we can get those supplies to you so we can get started for the semester uh, on the making portion. Um, also, I just want to remind everyone that we still have artist journals due every week. Um, I will continue to grade those. I'm a little bit behind. Sorry about that. Uh, I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. And also, I want to remind you about the museum paper. And the museum paper is going to be due here coming up. So make sure that you take a look at that due date and make sure that you uh, get that thing in on time. There have been some late submissions to some of the projects. So for anyone who has been submitting late, let's try and get a little bit more on time with getting those things done and maybe just checking in a couple of times. Let's talk for a second about uh, what is expected of you guys in this Canvas class. Um, and I know that many of you guys are new to distance education, myself included, and I just wanted to let you guys know you need to be checking in a couple of times a week to see what's going on with the class. Uh, this next uh, project that we're going to be working on, we're going to be working on for quite some time. I'm going to be putting up several demonstrations. Um, those demonstrations will be um, kind of staggered, uh, meaning that there's going to be one that will be up today to get you started on doing your uh, first, uh, your uh, self-portrait uh, slash uh, person versus machine project. Um, that'll include like how we're gonna basically set up our clay, um, how we're gonna start building this object, how we're gonna start making that mass. Um, I'm also gonna be uh, describing some information about proportions of the face, even though we're gonna be working off of either images that you take with your cell phone or uh, images that you print um, from a camera uh, you still want I still want you guys to understand a little bit of information about the uh, proportions of the face or the head if you will we're working in three dimensions but we're basically making kind of a relief of the face um, it's going to be a little bit of a face plate so anyways um, just want to kind of introduce that portion of it. Again, this thing is called uh, person versus machine. And if you take a look at the um, page that's in the module, uh, that page is going to give you information about what we're doing. A couple things that I'm going to point out from that specific um, uh, page that's up there, that's the instructions for the project, is that half of this object is going to be your face. The other half is going to be somehow inspired by some sort of machinery or man-made objects, all right? Um, so that can be anything, like, I mean, it, what ends up being interesting in a lot of these um, pieces is that there's basically the organic look of the human face, and then you're also getting more of the kind of hard edge, machine-made, man-made uh, man or person-made um, uh, kind of, machinery or gears or parts, electrical parts, uh, architecture, all sorts of things. And that's kind of what we're going to go over here in this uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'm also going to be putting this PowerPoint up uh, so that if you guys want to take a look at it um, on its own without my dialogue, uh, you'll be able to kind of go through there to get some imagery. Okay. Uh, so other than that, this is going to be a, you know, uh, you can refer back to this if you need to. It's just going to be a little bit more long-winded because I'm going to be giving the lecture portion and why we're essentially going through, uh, you know, and describing why I'm uh, posting each one of these slides. So um, something to remember that's also listed on those instructions um, is that you guys can choose any portion of your face to be able to have that half portion okay um, you can bisect it directly down the middle and have a you know 50% on the left and 50% on the right you can do that with um, you know doing doing that uh, horizontally uh, bisecting the face so that you see you know uh, basically kind of right down the uh, middle portion um, 
but you don't have to do it that way. It doesn't have to be so black and white, like left, right, up, uh, you know, top, bottom. You can have something, uh, you, can, you, you can essentially manipulate a line or put a line through the face that is a direct diagonal. And that could be a straight line diagonal, or it can be a wavy line, or it can be a zigzag line. There's no end to the type of, or the way in which you're going to bisect this, uh, the, you, you know, your self-portrait. Um, it doesn't even have to be bisected in two separate pieces. You can have five or six different portions of the face that are represented, um, and they can be just windows into that portion of your face. You know, for example, you could, I mean, essentially you could kind of figure out how many or how, how many kind of circles you can draw on the face and then you can use those portions of the circle to be the portion that's the face or you can have that those circles be the portion that's man-made. Basically like it's holes, you know, round holes or amoeba-shaped holes or square holes that are essentially... Um, in the face and, that expose um, that kind of machine portion of, of inside. And that machine portion inside doesn't necessarily have to represent what is underneath the skin. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm, you know, if I'm putting that circle or that portion right over the eye, it doesn't mean that I have to find something that's the same shape as the eyeball to be able, to, in, that's a machine part, like a gear, for example. Um, you don't have to use that gear to represent the eye, and it doesn't have to be at the same scale that the actual human eye is either. It can be much larger. It can be much smaller. It doesn't even have to be something that represents the eye. It could be something that's underneath that's completely different that doesn't represent those portions. The eye, the nose, the mouth, the hairline, the forehead, um, the scowl lines in the mouth, anything like that. Like Those do not have to be represented, but they can be. So that is up to you as the sculptor to decide how it is that you want to represent this thing uh, that is your person versus machine. And at the end of this, there's going to be some examples. And again, those examples, are you'll be able to access them through the PowerPoint without me talking and giving this lecture as well. But it's very important that you kind of go through this and listen to it as well so you can kind of see what I'm talking about for this project. So what I'm going to start out by showing you guys is some uh, kind of some um, uh, images that that deal with kind of um, this anthrop anthropomorphic or um, kind of uh, you know duality essentially that uh, that we can have in this project or this juxtaposition um, that uh, we might uh, have in this project that we're working on. So. I'm going to go on to the next slide here. There we go. So this is basically a hybrid connection of a triceratops and a helicopter. So it's kind of that same idea. We can see that portions of this look very helicopter and some of these portions look very triceratops. But what I, one thing that I want to point out with this triceratops is that that's this, the triceratops portion of this has been um, stylized to match the kind of sleek aerodynamic almost qualities of something like a helicopter, right? Where when you guys are sculpting your self-portrait of your face, I don't want you to stylize it. I don't want you to make it cartoon-like. I want you to try and basically represent this, uh, represent the portion of your face as realistic as we possibly can, all right? Trying to get the scale of everything correct, the scale of your eye to the nose. The nose should be the furthest portion sticking off from this if we look at it in the profile view, um, those sorts of things, okay? So that's why in that description as well or in the instructions, I mentioned that you should take some images or have somebody help you take some images of the very front portion of your face, but then you also need a side view of your face so you could see what the profile looks like. These are three-dimensional objects. We want them to extend from... Uh, the board that we're working on so that we have some depth that's created within this object, okay? So um, that, uh, but just to give you an idea, this piece here, this shows you that kind of, uh, the, that kind of morphing of these two objects. And it can be a morphing like that too. It doesn't have to be a cutout. You know, I've had students before that have made these objects and they've cut out 
uh, or cut off essentially the skin portion to reveal something that might be underneath. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the, the case. Maybe there's something growing off of the head. Maybe it's growing off directly, or sorry, sorry, of the face. Maybe it's growing directly off of the face because this is going to be a face plate, not a full three-dimensional head. We're not making a bust here. And you'll see this in the demonstration that I post. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is, or what you might end up doing is you might end up having a portion of this that actually extends further out than the face, maybe even further out than what the nose is. You know, uh, some interesting things that I've seen in the past are having something like a cityscape growing out of the head right? Either the top of the head or the side of the head or, you know, just that half portion maybe is that, you know? Um, it can be something that's uh, that, that where, but what you don't necessarily want to do is we don't, well, not necessarily, you don't want to do this. You don't want to have something like a landscape coming out of uh, being a part of this because that's not representing anything that's man-made, okay? Or person-made, if you will. So we don't want to do that because then we're not going to get that kind of really kind of crazy juxtaposition of having something that's so contrasting being that the natural portion or the, um, the uh, what's the word I'm searching for here, um, the uh, organic portion of the face that's juxtaposed against a very contrasting image or a sculpture that's very hard edged, you know, like a cityscape or buildings or something of that nature is very hard edged. Uh, we don't see a lot of smooth, soft lines that occur within our um, within our uh, the architecture that's that's around. Some of the more contemporary architecture, which we'll kind of look at a little bit here in a moment, um, like Frank Gehry, for example, some of his stuff is maybe a little bit on the organic side, but. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. We're going for a big contrast here. We're not going for something that's very, um, you know, uh, simple, if you will, or like that, like what I uh, described to you about a landscape. You know, we don't want to have the face, and then we don't want to have something like just uh, a mountain and river, or a mountain and a lake, or something like that. That's not very contrasting, essentially. Um, you're not going to get those hard edge lines that are part of like this, these person made objects or, uh, human made objects. Um, here's, uh, something, this, uh, is a sculpture from, from Burning Man where we're, you know, we're kind of removing something like the idea of the truck and we're removing it from what its usual representation is, is where it's actually on the ground being very stagnant. This is a very, um, uh, a very dynamic uh, piece of work um, where we can almost imagine that these trucks are, you know, flying around in circles or something like that. But then we see that there's these pipes and all these other things uh, that are very man-made uh, that are connecting all these objects. So this is just here a little bit for reference so you can kind of see, um, you know, kind of removing the idea of, uh, you know, transportation and travel uh, from the idea, from the truck itself and kind of bringing it into a new realm, into that kind of contemporary sculpture realm. And this here, the typewriter sculpture, this is basically just to kind of show you how can we make some man-made parts or some person-made uh, parts, you know, and, and make them represent areas of the face. So if that's your decision that you want to actually have um, human-made objects that make up portions of the face, like the nose and the eye and the hair and things like that, this is something that's using, you know, all kind of uh, typewriter parts. So this is basically where a typewriter has been dismantled and then put back together in a different fashion to represent the human face or the human head. Okay. Um, for many of you guys who maybe don't know what a typewriter is, those, these are the things that we used to use when I was a kid to write papers rather than, you know, word processors and getting on a computer and seeing a screen type directly on paper, right? It's a crazy idea. If you don't know what it is, look it up. They're pretty cool. I mean, not as cool as a computer, but still pretty cool. All right, um, same kind of thing here. This is just a robot sculpture, okay? So this robot sculpture is showing you the same thing. It's basically using metal pieces to, and, and uh, hinges to articulate and, you know, to show these uh, uh, areas of the bar body where, um, you know, where the elbow joint is and where the, you know, having a ball joint or something up here at the shoulder. We're not going to be dealing with this portion of it, but certainly what I want you guys to see is maybe in the in the face area, right? 
kind of um, simplifying the face down to planes and making flat portions of it that represent those uh, human-made objects. But then there should be some detail that's in there as well, rather than it just being a flat. We don't want to just take it and, you know, if we were to bisect this in half and have this be that half of the face. I want you guys to get maybe a little bit more creative with that. Maybe we do something for just the cheek area like that, but then in the eye area, maybe we put something else there, okay? Um, another uh, kind of idea of what we're looking at here is just another Michael Jack. This is another robot head, just the head itself, and it's uh, of Michael Jackson. So it, it has still the same characteristics. If you looked at a portrait of Michael Jackson and then you looked at this, the proportions are all the same. The eyes line up in the right place, the nose line up in the uh, the nose lines up in the same place, same as the mouth and the forehead and the hairline. And so we want all these things to occur as we're making, um, making our regular uh, portion of our face, the portrait part or self-portrait part um, of, of you guys as the sculptors. But then, you know, maybe, uh, you know, using something like this portion here or just sectioning things off, right? This is one, this is a good uh, thing like the robot one before showing you, you know, where we can maybe, you know, section something off here over the eyebrow and then have it come down this direction and then over here kind of, gosh, that looks like Nevada now that I'm looking at it, um, you know, making this kind of plate portion or this portion of it that's, um, that's removed from our self-portrait and then putting uh, human-made objects in there somehow uh, to either represent or to be something abstract and interesting to look at that's a, a different portion of the face, um, something growing out of it, for example. But we don't want it to be growing out in the sense of an organic form. We don't want to have a tree grow out of it. A tree is not a man-made or human-made object. That is something that a human is just going to plant and watch grow in water. So sure, maybe it's kind of quote-unquote made, uh, made by a human, but not necessarily... Uh, you know, human made parts. I want you guys to think differently than that. Okay. Um, here's another, uh, just kind of interesting thing, which I want you to, I guys, basically the reason I, I put it this in here is because picture this as your, uh, as the face portion, the Austin Martin with all these smooth, sleek lines, which is essentially what we have as humans. We have soft lines, you know, we don't have the hard edged portion. And then when you look at these pieces that are splitting this car apart, um, you know, something like this, this is very hard edged, very human made looking, even though I know this is human made as well. Um, this portion is kind of human made looking. So when we see that area, right, we can look at it and say like, that is definitely not organic. That is definitely hard edged, human made very uh, machine looking, right? We still see the same thing with like gears and, some, and, uh, and things of that nature. But this is just split right down the middle, which is totally an option for you guys as the maker. Maybe that's what you do for your object. Maybe you do it some uh, different way, okay? Um, and then you think about like uh, cyborgs or, you know, something that could be, uh, you know, um, the internal workings, if you will, you know, we have this outside portion of the face that looks very real, but then underneath it's like, ooh, this is not a real object. This is not really a self-portrait of me because I'm not the one that's underneath there. This is something that's that's definitely human made, this kind of um, cyborg type of uh, situation. So just, to, and then this is like the internal workings in here. And then here you have this kind of skeleton portion, that skull portion that's sticking off. And if you look at this, you can even see the teeth right there, right? If you look really closely. So just another kind of interesting thing to think about, okay, about how we can do this. So um, here's a few things that we can look at for inspiration, okay? When we're looking at these things for inspiration, um, these are just a couple of different categories that I've put together for you guys to kind of see. Um, something like electrical parts, and that's not the only uh, things that are electrical parts, you know, um, switches, plugs, um, you know, something like a switch could be used for a nose, a plug could be used as an eye, you know, all sorts of different things you can use if you're going representational in that sense. 
um, you know, metal piping, something like this, like HVAC or uh, venting that, that is up inside of buildings. Uh, this is just a flexible conduit, but it's something that's interesting to look at, this kind of, it gives a lot of texture, and sometimes adding texture like that really helps your objects because adding that texture in there adds some interest, right? If you have smooth, clean lines of the face, and then you have a very kind of rigid, um, you know, uh, repetitive texture like this, this is something that can definitely help add some interest, okay? Um, metal gears, you know, um, just all sorts of different metal gears and things like that that may exist inside of something like a machine. Um, and, man, I think something's missing from here. I don't know how it got out of, out of this presentation, but even something like circuit boards, right? We see a lot of circuit boards these days. Um, so circuit boards could be something that could be um, added to that as well um, as those kind of uh, machine parts, essentially. And think of anything else that might be in machines, even wires, right? Um, that could be that could fall under the category of electrical parts. We can have wires and things like that kind of in there. Um, you know, that also could be if you're doing something where you're putting circuit boards or something like that. Maybe those wires are something that you add in extra that's not the sculpted portion of it. Um, that's maybe the, uh, you know, uh, uh, a mixed media kind of a situation where after the piece is all uh, finished and fired and uh, we've painted it and done all this other stuff, which we'll talk about later how we're going to finish these objects. And you're going to see some finished objects here from students as well. I don't have any process images. I just have the, fi uh, the finished product uh, kind of images to show you um, so you can kind of get an idea as to how we're going about this first project. Uh, other things to look at are things like architecture. This is the Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. Um, this is made by an architect, uh, or was uh, designed by an architect named Frank Gehry. You know, these very interesting, s still kind of curvilinear, um, you know, planes that are there, but they're very man-made looking. We also have these very straight edges that are involved as well. So any kind of architecture you can think of as well, stairs, railings, uh, concrete, windows, you know, things of that nature. Those could be things that potentially could be represented in, in this object at some point. And then I just threw this in here as well, the, uh, the Sydney Concert Hall um, in Sydney, Australia. And then I added this little uh, image as well. I can't, I, I can't remember the name of this architect, but very contemporary, you know, things like this where this plate kind of looks like it's disconnected from the uh, the building itself, right? Like something has happened, like a hatch door is opened or uh, something of that nature. And that's something that could be potentially interesting for this sculpture as well, is having pieces kind of growing off of or coming off of that face, like the face is opening up and revealing something else underneath, all right? And now we'll get to some student examples. Um, these student examples, these are the finished pieces, like uh, this, um, when I do this in uh, a non-distance um, education setting, um, we do this as a mold-making project as well. So we're learning how to um, do additive and subtractive sculpture, but then also uh, the students end up making a, a mold. I want to, I'm, I'm reserving the mold making project for something a little bit smaller than this because we're basically going to be sculpting the head in the life size. Um, it will shrink when it gets fired in the kiln, but we're sculpting it in the life size, you know, kind of uh, uh, dimensions and um, having to make a mold um, the way in which we would typically make this mold and then use plaster and all sorts of other things to kind of put these things together um, is a little bit of a daunting task to try and do at your own home. And so when we do our mold making project, we're going to be mold making with smaller pieces uh, rather than this kind of life size plate of the face. So this student, when they made this object, they made three different um, pieces here of the same thing. And I'm not sure, maybe I, I think I can zoom in. Yeah, there we go. I can zoom in here and show you like, you know, this is the half portion of the face up here. No hair. It doesn't mean you have to do hair. You don't have to put hair into this object. You can if you want to. Right, that's a, uh, something that's that's the potential, and everything that's that's here. She went for this specific uh, student. She went for a uh, uh, a theme that had to do with you know uh, things that uh, are able to lock things up 
and contain things, right? So we've got this lock, we've got this kind of security code entry system, we've got a key that allows us to get in. And her idea behind this was, hey, this is silencing yourself and keeping things from people. You know, you have to have the code, you have to have the key, you have to have the the, the means to be able to get in. This up here, it's hard to kind of see, but that's a combination lock, right? You have to have the combo to be able to get in to know these things about me as a human being. This is what her kind of theme was for her project. And that's something that's incredible for you guys to think about, like to be able to do for this project, right? Um, let's see here, I gotta get back to the right size, there we go. Um, here's another uh, image of that as well. And so um, when she did this too, you see that there's a different key on this one, right? Uh, than there was on the upper one, okay? So just a little bit different. And then, you know, going to Home Depot and getting things like chain, um, finding old locks. I believe she got these, if I remember right, from like a, a secondhand store or like a, a, a garage sale or something like that. Like any of the things that we're going to be using for our kind of presentation later on. Right, right now we're just making this object. We'll get into presentation and how we're gonna put things together later. Um, but that's gonna be a portion of this project as well, is actually taking this object and actually putting it into some sort of a display to be able to have it um, stand alone as a sculpture or as a part of a sculpture rather than just that one piece being the sculpture itself. That's not what we're shooting for here, okay? So again, a little detail shot. Um, here's another image from another student. You can see she painted it much differently using like a copper. There's these paints that you can get at, um, at all sorts of craft stores like Michael's and um, and places like, uh, like that where you can get, um, this is actually a paint that's metal paint. You paint copper onto your object and then you use, um, a patina, what's called a patina. It's a, it's a way in which um, it's something you add on afterwards after the paint is dried so that you can actually get an antiquing. So it can start to kind of, uh, you can oxidize that copper and have it start to turn green, right? So that's what she did here. All this other stuff here is just portions. This is an old piece of a table saw. Um, and then she found other metal objects that all have this kind of same um, kind of coloration to them, this same like, you know, antiqued, uh, rusted, uh, old copper parts, old metal parts. Um, and then she's connected them here to make a really uh, uh, wonderful composition. Uh, this is a wall hanging piece. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what her uh, motivation was for this, uh, if, because I, I just don't remember off the top of my head. But we can also see that this portion right here is like a railroad track. And that railroad track kind of goes up and over and around the eye in this circle. And then it turns around and goes over to the top of the head, right? So you can see here, this is actually a wonderful example of where this is not the same shape, right, of what the normal shape of the head would be. Right? Maybe it represents a little bit of hair. <clears throat> and that works. Okay? But having kind of an idea of where we're going to go with this object, like uh, this first piece right here, right? Um, rather than you know, trying to piece everything together later, um, if you have some sort of an idea of what it is that you want to use for your, uh, for your display, if you will, or kind of this background, what's going to hold this faceplate and what, uh, what is going to kind of showcase this faceplate um, sculpture, then that can kind of help, help you decide what, uh, what human-made parts you're going to be putting onto this. Okay? Um, here we have another one. This is a little, quite a bit different than the rest, right? So on this left side of the face, we actually see that the left side has, has it, it actually has hair, right? Um, it has some, uh, some things that are in the hair as well, okay? I'm going to zoom in on this one because I, oh wait, I do have a uh, zoomed in portion of this. Um, let's go a little bit closer. There we go. Um, we do have hair that's here. This is stuff that's been added later on. Like remember I mentioned the... Um, you know, adding something later in when we're doing our presentations, um, adding something in there like a uh, wire. Okay. This is where she added up, uh, added curls of, of wood. Okay. Um, and then she's using things like, uh, this sort of, a uh, almost like a CV joint or something like that for a car. Um, um, or it's some sort of a pump or something. Then we see like a, a needle here with the, like the syringe portion, not necessarily the needle portion. 
Um, but if you're doing something like that and you want to represent a needle, having something that's an actual needle coming out of there, that's that uh, mixed media portion that we're adding to kind of like what we added here or what she added here with the um, the curls of wood. Okay, um, and some of this is is nondescript. Like I'm not sure what these are. Okay, you know, judging by what this is showing, a, like a, a needle or a syringe, maybe these are pills. Okay, I'm not sure. Right, and then we have some gears that are in here, but having some sort of um, kind of direction or theme that you're going in will really help uh, help to guide you. Um, and then um, you know you're figuring out that display on your own. Right. Uh, here's another piece here. Um, it's kind of hard to see this as a bit washed out, but the white portion is the uh, the human portion of the face, um, and then over here is the uh, man-made object. And they kind of wanted to go for something that was a little bit on the steampunk kind of side of things. And so these are just uh, portions of this that have been put together with this nice, uh, you know, it's almost like a what I would consider like a reliquary, uh, which is kind of a box or a portion of this um, sculpture that is made to elevate the object that's inside of it. Like, you know, think about a box that holds a ring and when you open up that ring it's that box is not meant to be really um the the the, the piece itself it's showcasing and making the uh, object inside look more important okay we're going to get to this later on as well when we get to um doing a, a different project which is uh making a cornell box um and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's going to be our second project for the class. Um, but you can see here that there's very man-made, you know, pieces. This is almost just like plates of metal with almost rivet uh, marks that are in here or some sort of way that they're connected. Um, again, very hard to see the details of the face here because it's a little bit washed out from the photo. Um, and then these are all parts from essentially Home Depot. These are just pipe parts that came from Home Depot that have been painted to make it look almost like a... I don't even know what this thing like. To me, it kind of looks like a uh, a, mi a mine that would be under the ocean, right? But I can't remember off the top of my head what this what what this was designed to be from this student. Um, uh, but it was a pretty large piece. And then these are just uh, you know um, long bolts that have been uh, added on to this object to help it stay stable on the table, All right? Um, Oh, here, here we go. Here's a close-up of the face. We can see that the eyes are, the eye here, the brow, the nose, the lips, you know, meant, oh, and down here, this portion is almost like a wing nut, right? Here, we have this interesting part right here that adds a lot of texture. And then the way that this, this student painted this is they uh, used a similar technique, but you, I think they used a bronze um, paint, and then they use the uh, the oxidizer on that bronze paint to bring out these um, these other colors there. All right, um, and then this student used uh, three separate pieces as they're essentially degrading. It's almost like this uh, the human aspect of it is becoming less and less, and the man made or human made portion is is taking over even the skin portion of this item. Um, Relatively simple background, um, maybe not my first choice, uh, but it's it's interesting enough. Um, but it looks very new, where it's whereas over here it doesn't look that new. So maybe if there was a gradation on this, you know, maybe from the left to the right, where it looks very clean and real, and then it starts to degrade over this way to a much more um, you know rusted or uh, older version of this piece of corrugated metal that may have been a little bit more interesting i'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can see the faces everything here looks very new very new copper very new looking aluminum all painted with acrylic style paints um, and then a very real representation of the way in which this uh, this female uh, face is and then as it comes here we start to see some of that go away but we still see some of those same hues of the uh, the pinks and the lightness of the face. Um, and then by the time we get down to this one, it's degraded all the way and it has that same kind of look, but very old look to the metal, to the uh, kind of metallic objects there. So those are the, exam the student examples that I have to show uh, you. Just a few examples of the types of uh, uh, 
presentations we can have later on once we get to that part. Right now, we're just going to be making the face. Um, so go ahead and take a look at this, uh, you know, or after you've taken a look at this PowerPoint presentation. What I really would like you to do is sit down and start um, drawing some thumbnail sketches or thumbnail images of how you could bisect the face. Um, I believe it's even mentioned in the instructions as well that you should be doing this. But I want you to be doing. I want you to be doing some research. It's like, how are we going to bisect this face? Is it going to be rips out of the face where it's not just this kind of left, right, up, uh, top, bottom kind of a situation? Most of the ones that I showed you were that way, um, and I would say that most students end up doing it some uh, some way, shape, or form. But you can see on this one where this is not a direct straight line. It has some. It has some curvature to it, some some portions of it that look a little bit different. So that could be very interesting as well. So just kind of things to think about, okay? Um, and uh, take away from this pro or from this PowerPoint point presentation. Start drawing some thumbnail images. I want you to start taking uh, photos of your face because you're going to need these for reference. And it may be a good idea to print those things out, okay? So that you can have them available to you. If you have a good size mirror. You know, having a mirror around is really helpful, right? Or even one of those like bathroom mirrors where you can kind of get yourself close to see, um, you know, what you look like close up. Um, those all can be very, very helpful as well. You know, having that mirror in front of you while you're sculpting for yourself, um, having images printed out that are in front of you rather than having to sc scroll through images that might be on your cell phone. But if you don't have the means to print anything out or if you don't, you know, you don't want to go to CVS to have them printed out or anything like that, then just use those images from your phone. But maybe what you're going to have to do is get out a ruler or get out a, a tape measure and kind of find out the size of your head, right? How tall is your head? How wide is your head? How wide is it in the cheek area or the jawline area? And how wide is it once we get up to the, uh, to the temple portions of the head? And if you want to, none of these have ears added to them and you don't have to add ears, but if you want to, you can right? Because maybe one of those ear parts ends up being one of the human-made objects or person-made objects that you're adding to that, um, to that uh, project. Um, and maybe you do the same for that other portion. But the other thing is that where the ears lie on our head, it's pretty far back on our head. So, you know, you kind of want to get, uh, you're probably going to want to get a little bit closer uh, to, uh, you know, the, the high point of the nose. Um, rather than having that real big undercut of the chin, right? Because that uh, that can be problematic as well. But if you want to go that far back, you can, okay? But what we don't want to do, because it's going to take too much time and there's a lot of problems associated with it because we're going to do something that, with this afterwards where we're going to be hollowing the object out and it'll all be in a demonstration, so don't go trying anything until I give those demonstrations. Um, but you can, um, you know, we're going to be hollowing these things out because the clay in which we have that we're going to be using, it can't be fired in the solid state. And I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do that once we get to that portion of it. Things that are also mentioned on that instruction page that I'm just going to reiterate here is that we need to keep this thing wet. We need to put down a piece of plastic. This will all be in the demo. Put down a piece of plastic to work on, and then we're going to be covering this thing up with plastic as we work through it uh, or work on it. And then on occasion, we might need to use like a spray bottle or um, blotting a little bit of water on with a um, with a sponge to keep our object wet as we're sculpting. Some of these things take a lot of time to uh, to get to and to sculpt, especially these like little intricate details that are inside of these, right? Uh, these areas. Um, so uh, those are all things to consider. Um, pay attention to that instruction page. Feel free to send me uh, a question in chat or a question in email so that I can answer it for you. I'm here to help you guys out. It's just a little bit different because we're not in the classroom working on this. Um, so during our class time or at any other time, if you need to contact me, please contact me. If there's anything extra that you want to talk about, you can send me an email and we can meet out. We can even have a Zoom session if it's, uh, if it, if it's necessary uh, for us to kind of understand everything that we're doing, okay? Uh, so uh, that's, uh, this is kind of our step one in this process, listening to this lecture, sitting down, starting to draw some stuff out. Uh, by later today, uh, today is Monday. Um, by later today, I should have a, a basic kind of um, thing uh, set uh, a demonstration put up for you about how we're going to actually build the volume of the face to start thinking about what the volume of the face is. Okay, so that's very uh, important for us to do. Okay.
Um, enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>